Hello, this is Sebastian from Native Instruments. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with audio performance issues on Windows computers. This involves the third-party tool called Latency Mon, which is used to identify the causes of the issues. This video is intended for all those who are experiencing audio issues such as crackles or audio dropouts on Windows systems. It does not matter whether you are a tractor, machina, or a complete user. In this video, we use Tractor to demonstrate what to do, however the process is more or less the same no matter which software you're using. Launch the software you're experiencing audio issues with. Before you proceed troubleshooting with Latency Mon, see if you are able to solve your audio issues by using the latest driver or by changing your sample rate and audio buffer settings. In order to do this, go to the audio settings of your software. In Tractor, we open the Preferences and navigate to Audio Setup. If you are a machine or a complete user, you find the same settings under Audio and MIDI settings. Make sure that you are using the correct driver for your audio interface. This should always be an ASIO driver and never a Wasapi driver. If you are using the built-in sound card of your PC, we recommend to use the free generic ASIO for all driver. Find the link to our video about ASIO for All in the About section of this video. Here we are choosing Complete Audio 6 ASIO, as this is the audio interface we are using. Now go to the Settings panel of your ASIO driver. In our case, this is the Complete Audio 6 control panel. Under Sample Rate, choose 44100 Hz. Higher sample rates consume more of your CPU power required for smooth real-time audio playback and are only recommended if you are not experiencing any audio issues. Next, check the process buffer setting. This is also known as audio latency. On a system with real-time audio performance issues, a buffer of 512 samples is a good starting point. You can try to set this value higher if you're still experiencing audio issues. A larger value will lessen the load on your system by increasing the time available for the computer to perform all necessary audio calculations. If you are using a Native Instruments audio interface, such as Tractor Audio or Complete Audio, you should also check your USB buffer setting. Try changing the USB buffer to a larger value and hear if your audio performance issues disappear. If you couldn't solve your audio issues by choosing the ASIO driver, selecting 44,100 Hz as your sample rate, and increasing the process buffer, you need to identify the specific cause of the performance issues on your system. To do this, download Latency Mon from the link in the description of this video and install it. Next, launch the program you're experiencing audio performance issues with. In our example, we are using Tractor. Now, run Latency Mon. If Windows User Account Control asks you for permission to make changes on the computer, choose Yes. Press the green play button to start the analysis process. Go back to your software and start audio playback or do whatever required to reproduce the audio issue you're experiencing. With Tractor, it is easiest to load a track, press play and enable a loop on both decks. This way, the audio playback will last as long as needed for the test. If you are a complete user, load a few instruments or effects in your sequencer and play with them. In Machina, you can program patterns and loop them. The test needs to run until the audio issue occurs, otherwise you won't get the relevant results required to identify the cause. After the issue has occurred, let the test run for another two minutes and then press the red stop button in Latency Mon to end the test. The main tab gives you an overview of your computer's real-time audio performance. Let's first focus on the highest measured interrupt to process latency. Here you can see the total time the processor is blocked for a certain system task and not available for audio processing. If this shows a value of 1000 or above, this is an indication that real-time audio performance is at risk. If it shows a value of 4000 or above, your system's current state is not suitable for real-time audio processing. Possible solutions include updating your BIOS and chipset drivers as well as installing the latest Windows updates. 
In case these measures don't help to reduce the interrupt to process latency, contact the manufacturer of your computer for further help. Let's now move to the Stats tab. We are interested in the reported and the measured CPU speed. If there is a significant difference between these two values, your system is slowing down the CPU in order to save energy. This will very likely harm the real-time audio performance. The following should be tried to solve energy-saving related performance problems. First, open the Windows Control Panel. Then go into System and Security and choose Power Options. Set the power scheme to high performance. If this setting is not available, click on Show Additional Plans. Next, click on Change Plan Settings. Here, set to turn off the display and put the computer to sleep, to never. Finally, click on Change Advanced Power Settings. Let's go through some important settings and make sure that they are optimized for real-time audio processing. Under Hard Disk, turn off Hard Disk after, set setting to Never. Under Sleep, Sleep after, set setting to Never. Under USB settings, USB selective suspend setting, set setting to disabled. Under processor power management, minimum processor state, set setting to 100%. Under processor power management, maximum processor state, set setting to 100%. Under Display, turn off Display After, Set Setting to Never. Confirm your changes to the power options by choosing OK, and then click Save Changes in the Edit Plan Settings window. Some computer manufacturers additionally install a proprietary application that takes over the control of the energy settings of the CPU and other computer components. Deactivate any such application in order to make sure that the optimizations in the Windows Energy settings are effectively used by the system. Alternatively, you may have to alter the settings in this application instead of the Windows Energy settings. If you are not sure about this, please consult the manual of your computer and contact the manufacturer for any further questions. Another important aspect is the behavior of the drivers on your system. You can view the latency caused by the worst performing driver in your system under Highest Reported DPC Routine Execution Time. To learn more about the driver latencies, open the Drivers tab. The Highest Execution column shows the execution times of the drivers, with the highest ones listed at the top. Everything up to 1 millisecond should be fine. Higher execution times mean that the driver is causing a notable latency issue. Write down the name of any driver file causing a highest execution value of 1 millisecond or more. In our case, it is a network driver called ndis.sys. If you have many drivers with an execution time right below 1 millisecond, they may add up if executed in quick succession. This can cause problems as well. We have now identified the drivers causing real-time audio performance issues on your system. Next, download and open the drivers list PDF from the link in the About section of this video. In there, you'll find specific troubleshooting instructions for the most common driver problems. In our case, we look for information about the ndis.sys driver. As you can see, the drivers list PDF advises us to disable any network cards. To do this, go to the Windows Device Manager, right-click the corresponding entry, and choose Disable. Note that there might be more than just one badly performing driver on your system. 
In this case, follow the troubleshooting suggestions in the driver's list PDF for each of the problematic drivers separately. If the problematic drivers reported by latency mon in your system are not listed in the PDF, first try updating them. In case this doesn't help, please evaluate if it is safe to disable the device in Windows Device Manager like we did with the NDIS.sys driver. Here you can see a list of devices that you should never deactivate since these are essential components required by Windows. In general, you should not deactivate anything which is listed in the following branches. Computer, disk drives, keyboards, mice and other pointing devices, processors, storage controllers, or system devices. You can now run LatencyMon again in order to verify if the changes made to your system have improved the identified problems. Make sure the first test has been stopped before you start a new one. If LatencyMon now shows an improvement of your computer's real-time audio performance, you may want to go back to the settings of your audio interface. You can now try to set lower process and USB buffer values, as well as higher sample rates. Note that this is optional, and you should only do it in case you have specific reasons for changing these settings. If you aren't able to achieve satisfying results with the help of this video, Check the comprehensive Windows tuning tips in our knowledge base. The articles are linked in the About section of this video. Furthermore, since these are hardware-related issues, we recommend contacting the manufacturer of your computer for specific information on your particular system. Also, searching the internet for specific issues or drivers reported by LatencyMon can be very helpful as well as searching the internet for the model name of your computer in combination with search terms such as DPC issue or latency problem.